tilted a little bit. All right, all right, all right. Oh, I'm still tilted. My God, today. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, I got a couple of things to work out. Let me adjust the cam. <laughs> Y'all know I'm both production and talent. Hello, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Um, still a little change. Is that good? I think that's good. I like this. I like where we are. I like what is given. Can y'all hear me? Oh, I'm seeing hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, let me get on. Let me get up on the live so I can um read the garbage. Because today is gonna be a good one, okay? Y'all see, I'm in my Angela Davis. Angela Davis did the thing. I'm in my Angela Davis wig. So, I mean, what else did you expect? What else did you expect, honey? You read the title. This is why, this is why I get keep. <gasps> this is why I get keep. <gasps> this is why I get keep. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scream in your ears. Hello, 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 everyone. Um, okay. Yes, come on, Giselle, letting people know, like the video as you come in. Like the video as you come in, y'all. Um, the wig has been brought back. That is correct. Power up, girl. Now, listen, um, I don't want to filibuster too much because um, my lives have been getting a couple, like more traction on my channel. Oh. <laughs> Do I have any cooth? Just full bottle of wine. <laughs> it's Friday night, and girl. Uh, girl, what is it? You know, it's Friday night, and I'm ready to drive. Throw me the wine, baby. Let's go. Okay, no, seriously. Let me pour my red organic wine. Y'all know I'm good for that. Mm. That's going to be tasty. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm really, really excited for um, today's video because I think it's going to be a really interesting and needed conversation within the black diaspora or the African diaspora. Now, Let's start. Let's let's set the tone and the stage for this video, right? Um, this is not video essayist herb. This is not even fully academic herb in full effect, right? I think for me to go into my deep dive bag, that would require you know preparation, research, data allocation, all of the things. This is just kicking it herb. This is just kicking it herb. You know what I'm saying? Like I jot down some of my thoughts on my MacBook. I uh, you know. Prop the camera up, throw on my Angela Davis wig, and I come and talk to my home girl, tall boys, the homies. Which, by the way, hey, old world, homeboy and homies. Welcome and or welcome back to my corner of the internet and today's live video, a corner where pop culture meets critical thought and medium ghetto antics. I think today is going to be the perfect blend of media, come on, Kiki Herb, <laughs> of medium ghetto antics and, um, critical thought right not critical analysis but critical thought so understand that everything is not going to be perfect here everything is not even perfect in my deep dives actually if you are a member of my patreon then you already know this um because i said it in my renaissance tour analysis video part two that is available now and forever exclusively and only on patreon that i quit my job um i released my job and it is not because I'm really in academic standing, uh, academic, in the financial standing to have made such a decision, but it is because um, I felt that I wanted to create better researched videos. I wanted higher tech. I wanted uh, more frequent videos. And I really wanted to cater to the people who have been joining the Patreon. And I wanted to, like, if you're putting your money towards something, in, in, in a day and age where, girl, money is tight, girl, my, I, I can only carry a corn purse. Anything bigger is just filled with air and gum wrappers. So if you're willing to give your two, five, 10, 20 bucks or, or more, um, then I want to curate content specifically with you guys in mind. And I want to be able to give everybody, the girls here and the girls there, all of their things. And we have a special project coming in October that I just want to be fully ready for. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to be fully ready. And again, we get into that over on the Patreon. Now, on to today's video. Damn, we almost four minutes in. I like to move a little bit quicker, but it's okay. Um, on to the topic of today's video. This is why I gatekeep blackness. Now, we are going to be using this Erica Mena and Spice fight that occurred on one of those shows, girl. One of those reality shows. Love and Hip Hop, Atlanta, girl, Tokyo, Japan, New York. I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm not really that kind of reality TV girl. My reality TV ranges from extreme trash like the Zeus Network <laughs> to something a little bit more class and high classy and high strung, like um, the Real Housewives of Potomac or Beverly Hills or uh, girl Atlanta. We got to talk about Atlanta. We've got to do a video about Atlanta. Because, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I still got this up. I need to get rid of that. <laughs> um, but, yes, we are here to talk about Erica Mena and really to have a larger conversation about blackness. Who is black? What is black? What is race? Who is race? Where is race? <laughs> so, to be clear, Erica Mena is Afro-Latina. Contrary to the comments that people were commenting over on um my uh, community post that I posted where um, I said, Erica Mena, Mena is Latina. She is, she, she's Dominican and Puerto Rican. She's Afro-Latina. She's just not black, right? Because the two are not synonymous, okay? The two are not synonymous. Now, I am going to play this audio and we are gonna make some very important distinctions between us, <laughs> us, at them you understand what i'm saying and and to be clear to be to be crystal clear this is certainly not an us versus them no but as sure as piss is not rain <laughs> as sure as piss is not rain there is certainly and us and to them now we're going to break it down but i do i would like to begin with the audio most needed for us to understand and to really under you know to really get into Erica Mena's tea and why we are gathered here today what 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 grinded my gears and stepped on my balls it was this now shall we begin let me start it over Move it closer to the mic. Okay, okay. Not me wasting all that time and y'all can't even hear it. Hold on. <laughs> y'all looking at me like, girl, turn it up. We can't hear it, girl. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What is going on with my damn um, iPad? Okay. I'm going to play it over again and I'm going to move it closer to the mic. All right, basically, she's a racist bitch. <laughs> That's the long and short of it. Like, she's racist. Um, and I've seen a lot of people online call this colorist. And, you know, you have to share a racial identity in order for something to be colorist. Hello? 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 Um, now, let me get into these comments because I'm seeing stuff that is interesting to me. Um, so let me make sure I'm reading this. I'm also glad I got some words. Okay, okay. Everything looks good. I thought I saw something. Um, okay. Okay, every, everything looks good. I thought I saw something that was um, incendiary in the comments, but we good. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, like I said, Erica Mena is um, not black, but she is Afro-Latina. And we are going to circle back towards the tail end. Or like, after I get my thoughts off about the broader scale when we look at this from a more macro lens we're going to look at it we're going to focus in from a more micro trashy lens <laughs> and really look at whether or not you can say bigoted things about a person during a roast session um and not be targeting an entire group um and what all is and is a going on you know about everything 
if, if that makes sense, right? Like, you know, that conversation that, like, you can't say something that is anti-black without targeting the entire black community or, you know, fat phobic without targeting all fat people. We're going to get into that portion after I want to acknowledge, um, firstly, what is blackness? What is race? Um, what is Afro-Latino? And what is the distinction between being Afro-Latinx and being black? Um, now... First of all, let's start with race. I think a lot of us, I I just need to make sure that we're working from the same premise, right? A lot of us know um, what race is in this country and how it's defined just intuitively. But I I feel like having everything on the state, on the the table, for my definition, my working definition of race and the definition as it exists, right? So according to Oxford Dictionary, um, the definition of race is race refers to the concept of individuals, excuse, excuse me, of dividing people into groups on the basis of various sets of physical characteristics characteristics and the process of ascribing social meaning to those groups right now my working definition of race somewhat differs from that and I think it's an important distinction um my working and it's working as in it's growing and evolving and it's open for critique and all of the things my working definition of race is it is race is a politicized socially stratified um excuse me, a, politi- a politicized, socially stratified group with shared identity um, that can be characterized overwhelmingly by shared phenotype and characteristics, um, excuse me, and stereotypes. One more time. So race is a politicized and socially stratified shared identity that can be categorized overwhelmingly by shared phenotype and stereotypes and I think the biggest definite excuse me the biggest distinction between my definition and the textbook one is first the socially stratified piece right which essentially means there's a hierarchy and whether or not you are sure about where you fall in the race categories right and I think that can be particularly difficult for Latino people because to be Latinx that is an ethnicity and not a race right so I think even if you are confused with where you, or, or or for a multiracial people, like where do I fall, right? Um, I think that those are great inquiries, but we all understand still the social placement of each defined uh, race. And there are five distinct defined races in the, why am I talking like this? There are five distinct defined races in the United States, black, white, um, indigenous as in Native American, um, Asian and Pacific Islander. There's something else. Am I, am, I forget, am I skipping one? United States races. Don't let me mess up here. Races, five races. in Because I'm going based off of the U.S. Census and the U.S. Let's see. Yes, white, black, um, American Indian, which is like, or, you know, native, um, Asian. Oh, and native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. And then on the U.S. Census, they have some other race as a race category. Bitch, gag me. Like, you, you want to talk about uneventful. Excuse me. Um, Like, what is what I'm thinking about? Uninventive. That's what I was looking for. Um, Yeah. I think that's the first piece. You understand that there is a hierarchy and the social benefits and consequences associated with each race, no matter where you're confused about where you fall on this socially stratified race system. I also think another distinction that is very important about my definition, <laughs> and this is gonna rile, this is gonna rile some feathers. So I'll take questions, comments, concerns, and critiques after this statement. Is that race is overwhelmingly phenotypic, overwhelmingly. Okay. Now stay with me. That means, and I operate with a 70-30 rule with respect to race, okay? That means 70% of race and race identification and how you're treated, right, is based off of how you look, your phenotype. Do you look like a nigga? Boom, you're a nigga. (laughs) Boom, just like that. The other 30% comprises of the shared cultural um, experience the customs, your ancestry, right? Maybe your great, 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 great grandma was dark and you and you feel the need to let all of us know that every chance you get on TikTok. My great, great grandma was a darkie. Look, here's an image. She's just as black as you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, now, I understand that race has worked a number of ways across the world, 
right? And and it and, and in the United States in particular, um, there has been this idea of the one drop rule, which is why people always was what people often argue when I, you know, exclaim my position with respect to race. They're like, oh, but in America, it's always been if you're if you're if you have African ancestry. Ah! Oh my god, gag. 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 Everything. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What do I do? Oh my god. I should probably wipe this up. Ah! Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Back to our regular schedule programming in just a moment. It's Beyonce, okay? <laughs> Girl, Beyonce is fine. Oh my God. I can't believe this happened to me. Please hold. <laughs> I'm laughing when I'm crying on the inside. Yo, I just quit my job. You know how when your car been running just fine, just fine, and the moment income tax come around, it's like, oh, Oh, you thought you had a couple of bucks? Yeah, your muffler and your engine is about to give out. Handle that, boogie. Bitch! I just quit my job. If my MacBook don't recover from this... <laughs> if my MacBook don't recover from... If my MacBook don't recover from this... Oh, and then I dropped the glass of wine just being an extra-ass woman. You know what? I don't even think this is that bad. I don't even think this is that bad. <laughs> Girl, I might have walked right back in that job and be like, hey, it was all a joke. <laughs> when I said I quit, it was a joke, LOL. See? <laughs> See? Somebody said the universe wants you to upgrade. You got a universal check? Excuse me. Do you have a universal check that works here, there, and everywhere? I just told you about 15 minutes ago that the only thing I can walk around to carry my money in is a coin purse. Because if I carried a real purse, it'd be nothing but tumbleweeds, gum packets, girl, a peppermint suitable for a grandmother, and chump change. And you said that the universe told you to tell me to type out that it's time to motherfucking upgrade? Auntie Black. <laughs> Guys, I'm going through something. This is not a joke. This is supposed to be a serious video. And I was like, oh, this is definitely going to be the perfect blend of medium ghetto antics with social commentary. Oh, yeah. It got real me. Girl, it got hard ghetto. It got hard ghetto real quick. Now it smells like fucking um, organic grapes in this bitch that's been spoiled. Oh, my God. As a black woman. No, I'm just kidding. But honestly, I cannot believe this happened to me. I cannot believe <laughs> that this happened. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna put this here, have this absorb the wine. My God, today. Hold on, just give me a moment, because before I pick that, I, I have the MacBook upside down, having it soak. What do y'all think? Is that a good idea? What do y'all think? I'm about to quit. Already did that, right? <laughs> Who was about to comment that? You already did that. Oh, my God. I can't believe. Oh, my God. Thank you for the $5. 
I'm gonna get me a new wine glass. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go to the Dollar Tree and get four. I deserve it. After this shit. Thank you so much. I can't read your name right now. I would typically be reading it on my MacBook. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Somebody play uh, Aretha Franklin's version of Amazing Grace. <laughs> Please. Thank you as well for the five bucks. I love you. I love you deep. Trust me. I mean it. I think the universe. I think the universe told you to send that five dollars and you to send that five. That's what I think the universe said. <laughs> now that's what I think the universe. Now that's what I think the universe said. Y'all, I'm really scared to flip that um, MacBook around for real. I'm really fucking nervous. Like, I'm keying, but I actually am nervous. Um, oh, thank you, guys. Um, do I have Zelle? I believe I do have Zelle. <laughs> I believe I do. Um, oh, if it doesn't work, I'm going to cry. All right, I'm gonna just try to turn it around. The screen is black, bitch. Y'all, the screen is black. Ugh. The screen is black. Oh my God, I already know. That was a lot of wine. Jesus. Fuck me. It is not turning on. Oh my God. <laughs> Should I go dump it in some rice? <laughs> oh my God, y'all, it won't turn on. I don't know what to do. Yeah, it won't. Like, I'm pressing. If you'll see, it won't turn on. I'm talking, I'm like talking to y'all like y'all right here as I read the comments. But someone asked, it won't turn on. No, look, if you press and hold this right here, it's supposed to come on. Oh, thank you, guys. I fl girl, I flipped it upside down. And I put uh, I put a bunch of napkins in it. It is not turning. Girl, I... You said don't turn it on until it dries. Unplug it. Okay, it's unplugged. Um, can he not read our comments? Look at your phone. Okay, um, I'm reading the comments now. Thank you guys. Oh my God, whoever said $50, thank you so much. I have my iPad here. I'm gonna have to read your comments from my iPad so I don't have to ugh, like a crazy person. Oh my fucking God. What the fuck? Okay. Um, I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to put some paper towels in it. What the fuck? Like, what the actual fuck? Like, what, what are the odds? Like, you quit your job so you don't have any, like, stream of, not no stream of income, but y'all know what I mean. YouTube don't pay shit. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't be complaining like, oh my God, money, because I quit my job because I knew I was going to not be doing this. You know what I mean? But, all right, whatever. It's just I was not expecting that. Let me um open the comments up and read what y'all saying. And you know what? We will get back to our regular schedule programming because I'm a trooper. I'm a trooper. Um, One second, y'all. One second. And you know what? Oh, that's me. Uh, not me echoing. You said it happened to you, um, and it was five hundred dollars to get fit. Girl, I don't got five hundred dollars. I can let you know that now. Thank you, Kathy, for the five bucks. That was you know, that was very, very sweet of you. Thank you, Sydney ninety eight, for the fifty dollars. You are a legend and an icon. Um, thank you, T Bush, for the twenty dollars. Thank you for the computer repair fund. Thank you, thank you, Diamond, for the ten bucks. Thank you guys so, 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 so much. 
Um, fuck. Don't turn it on to the dry. So seriously, should I put it in rice? Oh my God. Thank you, copious cat. Thank you so much for the 20 bucks. Upside down for 24 hours, in rice for 24 hours before I try it again. Okay. Um, oh my God. Thank you for the 50 bucks. Y'all, wait, hold on. Now we about to get an, uh, we about to repair this bitch for real. Oh, my God. Wait, don't actually make me cry. Um, okay. I'm drinking this at the bottle. Not because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, alky. But because, bitch, I'm going through something right now. <laughs> um, th- oh, you guys are fucking, I, uh, like, um, like, 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 um, is the English, is, are English words a part of my vocabulary now? Thank you. Bath towel. Rap. Okay. Thank you, ex-professor. Thank you, guys. What the hell? Thank you. Yes, they usually suggest rice. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, is it, a, it is currently upside down, sitting with a bunch of towels in between it. I'm about to go get a, a thing of rice, and I'm going to run downstairs, and I'm going to run back up. I will be right back. Hold on. Hold on. Please wait. I'll be right back, y'all. And if anybody comes in while I'm going, let them know why I'm missing. I'll be right back. turned into something completely different y'all okay i got the rice oh my oh my god oh my fucking god who said five hundred dollars sorry sorry jesus uh oh my god deshaun is amazing is your name and deshaun fuck yes let me upgrade you is crazy thank you so much what the fuck what the fuck? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, like, like fucking thank you. You guys are fucking great. Thank you for the $10. Thank you for the, uh, the uh, uh, bitch. I can't even think. I, I, um, thank you guys. Um, Thank you. What's more powerful than thank you? Merci beaucoup? Um, no, seriously. No, seriously. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Oh, my God. Thank you, Nebula Mars, for $10. Thank you so much. Um, What job you got, sir? I can't flex like that yet. Um, but thank you for your $10. Is it... Um, is it Maud Nate? Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss B, for the $4.99. You guys, uh, what, like, one thing about my home world, homeboys and homies, I was prepared to pass out a little bit. But, I, but, but yeah. But, oh, my God. Okay. Um, oh, my God. And it, it just was time. Enjoy, enjoy. I feel like I should do something like, should I strip a little bit, pull out a nipple? I don't know. Ah! Okay, I got the rice. This girl, it's gonna be an experiment. I put my last phone in rice. Um, and it didn't work for my phone. I might need more rice, right? No rice, no rice. Um, someone explain. Okay, Kirk, uh, Captain Kirk, we were supposed to be talking about black people, blackness, and all that other good shit. But in the middle of me getting into the, a heated um, conversation, my full fucking wine glass, I'll show you. My full wine glass spilled all over my MacBook, and it doesn't work now. And then I dropped the wine glass. Um, and then also, I have the most amazing, thoughtful, beautiful... Thank you guys. Um, 
Oh, you say what? Well, no, you need an explanation for why no rice for the MacBook. Um, rice can get stuck inside the laptop. So then, what do I do? So then, what do I? Okay, don't use rice. Damn. So I just poured this rice in this bucket for no reason. Of these deli pickles for no reason. Um, wrap it in a bath towel. Okay. Let me get a bath towel. First of all, bitch, the fact that um y'all are sending this money makes me really think I can actually get this shit fixed. Well, no, I can actually get this shit fixed. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, not this bath towel. This is this is a bath towel for a specific purpose. Okay. <laughs> Let me get a different bath towel. <laughs> Bro, I got a bath towel. You know that bath. You know that bath towel. I got. I grab. I accidentally grabbed one of those bath towels. Um. Okay. I have a bath towel that's actually for bathing, <laughs> and not that other thing. Um. Upside down bath towel, like you had it. Okay. Okay. Upside down bath towel, like I had it. And then I got it, uh, I have another bath towel already on the ground. You know, the bath towel that you use for that thing, girl, because <laughs> that's less important. That's why it's on the ground. Um, I need to just let it sit. Okay. Okay. Oh, my God. You want to talk about community showing up? I love y'all. Can I get a hug? Like, no, actually, I want a real hug in real life. Thank you, guys. Somebody said, if you don't take your newfound wealth and get you a new one. Um, I don't have words for this shit. I came on here in a girl, $20 wig. And if people ask, girl, it's priceless. Bitch, it's my Angela Davis wig. Okay, it's priceless. Um, in my 2015 MacBook. Okay, it's 2014. You got me. Um, and... Y'all just, and I, I literally was about to be like, well, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, because that's just how the devil works. Um, I love y'all. <laughs> no, like, no, like, yeah. If y'all ever need a titty job, you know, whoop de whoop de whoop Call somebody else, girl. I'm an A cup. Um, but, you know, I will be there to support whoever you call. <laughs> I'll be there with bells and whistles to support whoever you call. Thank y'all so, so much. Um, anybody who I forgot um, to thank, I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No, Deshaun, we love you. Deshaun said I love us. Deshaun, we love you. Deshaun. Deshaun, you just became president of the home growth. <laughs> and just like that, and just like that, you became president of the homegirls. And I mean, everybody else who, I mean, everybody who's been here supporting is, is certainly in the homegirl ministry, right? If it's a choir, you're the choir director, though. <laughs> okay? And we got a couple of leads that we switch in and out. Wow. Okay, Um, should we get back to our regular school schedule programming without that and use the iPad? I think we should. I think we should. Um, so yeah, the people are saying Deshaun A. Hey, yeah, Deshaun, you did. And everybody else, and 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 don't think that I am not appreciative for everything. Y'all could have sent one dollar and I'd have been like, girl, somebody help me cover the tax. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I would have still um been incredibly grateful. Um okay. This is enough. Cause you know, in in, in, in this moment, it's y'all showing me the love. In the future, it's like this bitch still saying, I love you, thank you, I love you, thank you, I love you. Girl, get to it. Um, so, thank you. I love you. I'm dying. Okay. Um, whew, I'm hyperventilating a little bit. Y'all, like, the the way that, like, the emotional roller coaster that I just experienced right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Girl. I don't even know how to feel. Um, Yeah. 
So expect how did this bottle? Uh uh. This I gotta turn into a clip for the people to see on every social media platform I have. How the devil tried to what what the what the devil meant for your evil? <laughs> hold on, let me hold on. Let me just do something real quick, cause I got a little bit of um Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist. Um, you know, I got a little bit of that God up in me. So for just two seconds, I want to say what the devil. What the devil meant for my evil. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Oh! Oh! Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. If you know he's been good, if he's an on time God. The Bible said he will make your enemies your footstool. a good God he did it before he did it before he did it before he brought me from a mighty long way the same God yesterday today and forever more oh! Oh! oh my God I think it's glass in this hello 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 Oh! Hi! Oh! Oh! oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I rebuke and I bind the spirit of asthma. I rebuke and I bind the spirit of weak knees. I rebuke and I bind the spirit of poverty. I rebuke and I bind the spirit of a broken iPod. I rebuke and I bind. 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 Now, well, hold on. I am asthmatic. Whew. I rebuke and I bind. No weapon formed against my lungs. No weapon formed against my bank account. No weapon. No weapon. Oh yeah, I did forget all about Erica. But even that racist white woman couldn't stop because no weapon! Ah! All right, I'm done for real. 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 This, this is why I gatekeep blackness. This is why 
This is what I want to see. This is what I want to see. All right. Now be honest with me. I'm giving Whitney Houston, right? Right? I'm giving Whitney Houston. You know, from Sparkle. She was in Sparkle, right? I'm just giving, like, Whitney Houston's deep, dark younger sister. Right? No. I'm hearing that the wig is juicy. Uh-huh. A lot of things are juicy over here. Okay. The girls are saying it's giving Whitney. Don't make me pull out a note. E uh sing I would on Lee Alright, I gotta stop for real. Um, all right. I can't breathe a little bit. But you know, that's what the spirit of the Lord will do to you. Um okay, seriously, can we can we go on? Can we really move on? This is getting a bit disruptive. Um now <clears throat> What I was saying was um, <laughs> that I operate with race with a 70-30 rule, 70% phenotype, 30% everything else. So essentially, if you walk around and, you know, people, you tell people like, oh, I'm black. And the vast majority of the people that you tell that are like, oh, oh, are you? I can't even have this conversation anymore. I can't even have this conversation anymore. <laughs> I'm trying, but I can't. I just can't, y'all. I cannot. It, I, the, the flow that I had has been removed. It was just so perfect before. I think I'm going to just jump to the reading piece. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that 70% of you must have quit. <laughs> Not 70% of me must have quit. Girl, yeah, and the other 30% was about to go knock on that door like, it was all a joke. Girl, I know, I know, I know. It's September, but bitch, April Fool's. Boom, boom, boom. Girl, <laughs> it was all a joke. All right. I, I can gather myself to get back to what we were talking about, right? I can. I really can. Um, so that's my personal rule with respect to blackness. And what I was saying is like historically, um, blackness in this country has worked with the one drop rule, right? Um, and so essentially, if you have black ancestry or African ancestry, excuse me, irrespective of your phenotype, you were black or associated with, you know, some of the consequences uh, the, or you received some of the consequences associated with being a black person, um, I can't even breathe. Now, <sighs> I can't even think. <laughs> okay, seriously, for real. Now, I'm, I'm really focused for real now. Um, now, but the politics of looks and aesthetics are nuanced. We know that, right? That's why there's race, ethnicity, you know, all of the things. And ethnicity basically descri describes the culture of people in a given um, geographic region, including their language, um, heritage, religion or excuse me religious customs or just cultural customs right so yes technically afro latinx or just latinx people latinos whatever the case may be um that is an ethnicity and not a race do you get what i'm saying um but when it comes to afro latinos or latinx people we and that's right we do not uniquely fall under the or excuse me do not neatly fall under the ethnicity category. Um, and that's because while many of us share the same region, right, the same geographic region, we don't share the same language, right? So like Puerto Ricans and Haitians, I'm Haitian. Um, I'm Haitian, Jamaican, and my mom's dad is Puerto Rican and black. A whole big thing, but basically black, black like that, um, and Caribbean American, right? Um, first generation, because my dad, whatever, the whole big thing. Um, but while Haitians and Puerto Ricans say, share Spanish, we don't share all the same languages, right? We speak French and um, Haitian Creole and Spanish. Um, and so I think we share some of the same ingredients, but the way that we prepare the food is different, right? So being Afro-Latinx is not inextricably linked with being black. You get what I'm saying? Because... I, to I just told you 
that I was Afro Latinx, right? But before me telling you that, you, I didn't have to tell you, secrets out, but I didn't have to tell you that I was black, right? Because you've been digesting me as black from the very beginning of this video. And so when it comes to being black and Afro Latinx, because Afro Latinx is really just um, descendants of Africa and Latin America, right? And Latin America is inclusive of many French speaking, Spanish speaking, and Portuguese speaking countries. And that could be a whole separate video on its own. Latinidad is big and expansive. And I could talk about my perspective and my opinion as a Haitian person um, and the exclusions that Latin America historically has um, the, 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 the like the anti-blackness that exists within Latinidad specifically targeted at predominantly black countries like Haiti, which is why a lot of people don't even know that Haitians too are Latino. Um, but again, another conversation for another time. What I'm getting at is if Afro, to be black and Afro Latinx, I, I would read you as black. And then you would tell me that you're that you're Afro Latinx. I would read you though as black, right? Like it, it in the instance of what I'm saying to you, you read me as black, and then I told you I was Afro Latinx. And it's okay to be. And again, everything is not it's not a hundred percent phenotype, but I do think that race and blackness in particular is overwhelmingly about phenotype. And I think there is a distinction to be made between being a black person, being a racialized black person, right? Um, and being Afro descendant. You can be a descendant of Africa, right? Um, and that can be in, that can be a part of your DNA, that can be a part of your, your ancestral history, right? But you are not a black person living a black experience, um, experiencing the consequences of being a black person, right? Do you get what I'm saying? And I think that that is the key word here, descendant, descendant. I think the word descendant needs to become more amplified in the English language because the fact that y'all would sit up here and tell me that Sophia Richie is a black woman with a straight face, the fact that y'all, because her dad is Lionel Richie, okay, Afro descendant. And I think that that term has connotations with, um, oh, like a long history, right? So their ancestors have to have been black. I do, I am not of that belief. And, and the reason why I can use belief so strongly is because race is not real. The implications of race are real, right? So race itself is this made up construct that is, that is intended to be messy, divisive, but also complicated and confusing. Um, and so there will never be a world, and I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull her up for those of you who are unfamiliar. There will never be a world, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna say this with all 10 of my toes down. There will never be a world in which you can convince me, me, that, oh, not my thing going out, that this woman right here is black. That lady, that lady right there, that lady right there, as long as it's seven days in a week, 365.25 days in a year, as long as I am black as midnight, girl, as long as piss is not rain, <laughs> as long as the sky is blue, and as deep as my love is for my mother and hers in, and hers for me in return, that lady would never be black. Afro descendant. Her dad is Lionel Richie. That's that's Lionel Richie's daughter, Sophia Richie. People heard people saying who that. Um, and so I think descendant needs to be more popularized because what we don't want to do is detach people away from their culture, right? You may have like you may have grown up deeply entrenched in black culture, African-American culture, you know, continental African culture, Caribbean culture. And so we don't want you to have to divest from those things just because we're pointing out the very obvious fact that you do not live a black experience. Somebody said, Paris Jackson, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. When people start arguing that that lady, that that lady Paris Jackson, that blonde, slim nose, blue-eyed, pale-skinned, white woman, or even Halsey, <laughs> is black? I just start, I just be like, come here. Let's tap into reality. Because my either my eyes aren't working and I have to take them out, get a new pair, or you're lying to yourself and me. 
That's just not the way. And then for the people, like I said, for the people who are saying that blackness has historically worked as the one drop rule. And so, like, for instance, with Meghan Markle, who is incredibly white passing. I think when she was younger, she looked black and today she looks Mediterranean, white. If she told me she was Grecian, I would believe her. If she told me she was Italian, I would believe her. You get what I'm saying? Um, and if she says she was black and just because of the way that I understand blackness to be so expansive, I believe her. Um, but she doesn't really read black. Right. Um, and I think that there is nuance to be added for like public figures specifically because of the racialized black piece. So when you can be racialized as a black person, like they go and dig up, oh, Meghan Markle's mom is an obviously racialized black person just by looking at her, right? So based off of her phenotype. Now we can racialize you as black based off of your ancestry. That is something that's as old as time. I'm just making the argument that I believe that the politics of race are going to have to evolve and are evolving as demographics shift in this country. So as, as white people become a minority and mixed people mixed people or mixed race people become the my the majority and that changes the u.s census and political power um and the distribution of resources and and political resources specifically um i think that they are going to begin to shift they're already talking about it right with respect to the u.s census they're talking about shifting the way we define race because as long as you are a dominant group that has power you're going to try to move things around and gerrymander the system so that your specific group i.e white people will forever maintain that power right um and also just as people become you know as we see more mixed people um, living, doing life all in the mainstream and in real life, I think it's complicating our relationship to blackness, to race, um, and to all of the things. And I think we could have a larger conversation about um, racelessness and the theory of racelessness, um, but that's a topic for another day. I am interested to see what y'all are saying in the comments. So let me circle back here um, and get into y'all real quick because I know y'all getting into some things. Um, S. Patrick said, the risk you took uh, you took will pay off tremendously. Aw, as a newbie, you are, ca um, you are capturing, and the way you deliver the research is worthy of a cultural show. Bless you. Thank you so much. Powerpuff Girl says, Meghan Markle, her husband, did not know she was half black. Oh, are you saying that she said that? Uh-huh. Oh, and Kimberly Foster has a good video on her, too. Love Kim. Love Kim real, real bad. Um, Zoe Zeldania, who doesn't identify as black, Afro-Latina. She's an Afro-Latina, but that's, uh, she's a tricky one. Um, <laughs> she's a tricky one. Uh, when, when you use the one drop rule, you realize it's all about how you are perceived and how that colors your experience in society. Of course. Oh my God. Um, girl, is it Brige or Brige? Brige, Brige B says Zendaya. My African says she's basically Meghan Markle tone, um, but she grew up in a black neighborhood, so her experiences aren't completely separate from the average black person. Um, and that's why I said there's a 70-30 thing happening, because we are in an era of change, I think, as, as demographics shift in ways that they have never before in this country, um, and this country being the leader in so many ways with respect to or, you know, just putting our nose in places where it doesn't belong and trying to enforce our beliefs on other people. Um, I think it's interesting seeing more mixed race people come up and like, what is most beneficial for black people, right? Like what is most advantageous for our liberation? Allowing those people to feel a part of the black experience. I'm not talking specifically about Zendaya here. I'm talking about people who just don't look black but are Afro-descendant and identify as black. Um, I think it depends on their politic and that's why it can't be based on these people, right? Like, because if they use their politic in a very Candace Owen way, Candace Owens way, right? Like I'm black and even I, a bitch would be quick to be like, no, but you're not black mamas. You're not black. I didn't know until you showed me a picture of your great grandma or even I'm tired of doing the great grandma thing. I'm tired of doing the great grandma thing. Cause a lot of times I'm like, oh, y'all show y'all great, great grandma who was dark skin, whatever. I said it earlier today, but also I don't care if your dad was light skin black and your mom was blonde hair and blue eye and you happen to come out with green eyes, you're a brunette and pale skin, you are white. What happened to that 30% Herbie? You are white until proven guilty. <laughs> 
You are white until proven guilty of being black. And that's just that on that. And that's just that on that. Um, and so, and, and another ex, an example, which I was confused about whether I wanted to bring this up, but I looked up J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo's parents, that is a white woman. I don't even know why there is debate about that. That is a white lady. That lady is white, European, Spaniard, no, I'm just kidding. She is Puerto Rican. Um, and I think that we can have a conversation. This is with, it's, it's such a good word, descendant, descendant. Right, you are Afro descendant, but you are not black. You get what I'm saying, <laughs> and that's okay. Everybody wants our rhythm, but nobody wants our blues. And Erica Mena is the perfect example of this, of like someone who places themselves in proximity to blackness, but clearly despises black people or blackness itself as a concept. Now, can we blame anyone for hating blackness? Not entirely, because we grew up in an anti-black society that teaches us all of the ways to hate blackness and all of its intricacies, right? And, and then to ascribe degrees to that hatred on the basis of hue, size, features, texture, right? And so everybody hates blackness. It's not just Erica's racist ass. <laughs> it's not just Erica's racist ass. Um, but we can't eat her ass the fuck up. Num, 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 num. Girl, like a bowl of udon noodles. Girl, I can eat you up like a bowl of unseasoned udon noodles with tahini, with tahini, <laughs> tahini, with tahini seasoning on top. Okay, let me say this. Let's talk about whether or not, because I don't want to get too deep into the theory piece because I've been on here way longer than I, I was supposed to because of the incident that we had earlier. Um, I want to say... Do I think that you can make a bigoted remark at someone, right, um, and not be targeting an entire group? I think that you can, and this is what I'll say, and this is where medium ghetto, in the medium ghetto part of the medium ghetto intellectual, doop, 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 doop. I don't know if that sounded loud in your ear, taps in. This is where the medium ghetto, <laughs> taps in because no matter how knee deep no matter how knee deep I am in that textbook and that research no matter how knee deep I am in that academic that academia and that academic thing I always understand as a hood bitch that the library will remain open in my hood in my hood I don't know about show hood it was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So when it comes to reading the eyes out, panties off, and shoes off a bitch, there is, there is no length that I wouldn't go. And there's no length that I wouldn't expect you not to go. Because, bitch, you better lace up your shoes and run and read, bitch, because I'm on your monkey ass. <laughs> Girl, I'm on your wet neck, slobbery nose ass, bitch. You better get it together and spit it out. Spit it the fuck out, bitch. Because I'm not going to let you catch a breath. Okay? I'm that kind of reader. But I'm a child of God as well. And I'm a child of study. So while I do have many years of research and practice at those lunch tables reading. And also, I'll say this too. As someone who grew up dark, effeminate, you know, black, um, queer. Reading was for sport. Reading was for protection, and when that didn't work, it gave tussle. Win, lose, or draw, I'm fighting. Win, lose, or draw, I'm I'm, girl, I'm getting the eco styler jail, <laughs> and we gonna tussle like two niggas on the street. And that was boys, girls, faculty. <laughs> I kept, I stayed on the honor roll and had a wicked tongue and was steady in fights. That's my tea. That's my tea. Um, now, that's not in defense of that racist, bad face ass bitch. I just think that ad hominem attacks happen when you get irate. Um, and for me, I think everybody draws the line at something different. You could call me a faggot till you blue in the face. Bitch, that's not going to do shit to me. You could call me a darkie till you blue in the face. That won't do shit to me. Why? I done had enough niggas stop and get out the car. I 
I tell you about the time that I was at a club and somebody's boyfriend was on their knees on the asphalt screaming, I don't want Herbie. Yeah, I ain't had this wig on. Um, but somebody I met in the club, we, and he was screaming outside on the pavement like, I don't want that boy. His boyfriend was chasing him around the club. Bitch, it's nothing you can say about a faggot, dark-skinned, darky-ass bitch like me. Girl, skin like asphalt. Ass still fat. Yo nigga still want to fuck it. Now, um, where I draw the line is the racist shit. I don't, I just can't even, and also I'll say like when things become dehumanizing, I don't like that. Okay, I'm being serious now. When things become dehumanizing, I don't like that. I don't make space for dehumanizing language. Um, and I really think that we shouldn't move, we should, we really shouldn't move with any hatred, right? I don't want to do that. I don't fight people now. Um, I'm an adult. Um, I really think that there's no space for any of it. Personally, you can say anything to me. Um, and the only thing that is going to incite me to maybe not see what you are and just read you is the race shit, right? So that monkey shit would have would have made me irate. I would have wanted to flip a table. But what I also say is when you piss me off, my goal is to make your skin crawl. So a lot of us have been trained. You may not you may not necessarily you may think that you don't you don't think fat phobic things about people because you like, yeah, I'm calling you a fat beanbag built dirt dirt neck ass bitch. My mom fat. I love fat people, right? But really what you think is fat phobic and you probably don't like your mom's fatness if we really get down to the nitty and the gritty but i also understand that we live in a society that it taught you and your mom because it's time that fat people make or like non-fat people make fat jokes and other fat people agree right like if i was on live roasting somebody about their fatness because they said something about my gayness or my blackness or whatever and i just was reading them for whatever i could see there'd be big people skinny people straight size people agreeing and 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 contrary there'd be big people straight size people and skinny people disagreeing with that language people will exist on both sides of the spectrum there's gonna be people to, to support your foolishness no matter where you go but what i'll say is i think we've all been trained on how to hurt someone i know what to say to make your skin crawl and my goal is not to make you feel good i want to keep you up at night with the shit i said about you because that's how bad you pissed me off Girl, I want when you dropping your kid off the next day and your kid slammed the door, you start going off outside the window because you're thinking about what happened last week after I read the eyes off and panties off your bitch ass. That's what I want. I want when you in the shower, you screaming at the tiles in the bathroom like, oh, bitch, if I just want to say whoop, 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 because I cleared you. That's what I want. I want when you stub your toe in the middle of the night that you don't say, oh, fuck, you say, oh, Herbie, because that's how bad that shit hurt. That's what I want to be. I want to be an annoyance and agitation. When you grind my gears, okay, and, and you and you try to make me irate, it's not fire with fire. It's not I'm going to low, I'm going to hell. No, bitch, you go low, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. It's you go low, I'm going to sit on Satan's lap, bitch. Because I want, I want all your tea. And I want it to be ancestral. I want your great, great grandkids to be born angry and upset. <laughs> That's just what I want. You know, um, but that's problematic and it's messy. And the most elevated version of me, you know, the most mature version of me doesn't want all that. The most mature version of me just wants you to really, I would like to walk away and not acknowledge you. But there's a reason why people say, oh, she's Beyonce to the bullshit, because Beyonce is an exception, not the rule. You get what I'm saying? Beyonce is an exception, not the rule. So that's just how I feel. Um, those are my thoughts and opinions. <laughs> oh, no. What I'm saying, what I did want to say is because I draw the line at the race stuff, um, that shit was gross to me. That was gross to me. And I grew up with a mom who would say, sit your monkey butt down, right? She didn't say ass because she didn't curse. But my aunt would be like, sit your monkey ass down. And it's different. When you're not black, you can't say shit like that. You know, it all comes from the same anti-black space. But when you're not black, you can't say shit like that. Let me see what y'all saying. Y'all probably reading me boots because the medium ghetto jumped out and not the intellectual. But it's okay. It's okay. I can take it. I'm a big girl. Now. I see, okay, Tori says, I think it shows how good of a reader you are if you can offend a single person without offending anyone else. That means receipts were printed and real tea was spilling. See, but that requires you to have personal 
evidence. You got to have their tea. You got to have their tea. And yes, reaching for the low hanging fruit is what? Just that low hanging fruit. But, you know. It's easy. It's easily accessible. And we know what's going to grind people's gears. Somebody said, are you a Virgo? No, I'm an Aquarius, but I identify as a Pisces. Um, <laughs> Yasmin said, I'm weak. This is me in my head. But instead, I'm the person who gets red. <laughs> Well, no, friend. Get in your um, get in your room and start writing down shits in your notebooks. Or is, did you grow up in like? Did y'all roast people at y'all lunch table? Let me know that. Like at y'all lunch table in the gym in class, was it giving roast? Because when it get when it came to me, I did not take a breath between roasts. I was lighting your ass up, and then when it when it when it came to fighting, I didn't care who you were, especially as a kid. It was giving man, woman, and child. Because who 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 who, who gonna defend me? I'm a punk. Who gonna defend me? I'm a punk. Um, Captain Kirk says, and you responded to Siren. I gotta see what Siren says. But you said, like how people colloquially understand mix with a white man versus mix with a black mom, um, and what that entails. Oh, struggle, struggle reviews. TV said Herbie is petty, petty. I mean, you know, I don't really be fighting with people though. That's the reality though. I'm saying all this, but I don't really be fighting with people. And when people don't like what I say, my first response is usually going to be um, one of wit. Um, and I don't always resort to ad hominem attacks. I think the worst thing I may do may be condescend. I may be condescending. That's my first thing. Because I don't like the feeling in my body that comes with being in, at odds with somebody. I don't like the way that feels. It's gross and icky to me. But I'm no stranger to it and we can go toe to toe. We can go toe to toe because in my mind, I'm perfect, but I know the societal flaws that come with this body that I live in. One thing you could never come for is the fact that niggas line up the fuck with me. One thing you could never come for is I'm not the smartest bitch in the room, but I'm very intelligent. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. She's super thick. She's super pretty. <laughs> Her body's he. Like, um, I know my strengths. And I know what people would suggest are my weaknesses, which is why you could never say something I didn't prepare a response to in the bathroom against those tiles. Um, yeah. What are y'all talking about? What are y'all talking about? Um, Brige says, it irks me. Mixed is so expansive, too. But so many black people have mixed biracial trademarked um, as meaning half black. Like it's broader than that. I definitely think that being mixed is very expansive, right? Um, and so, yeah. Siren asks, question, in reference to gatekeeping, why is there such vitriol when people refuse to call biracial people with black ancestry solely black? Hmm. Why is there such a desire for that one singular identity? Um, you're saying like when someone says, oh, I'm biracial, but we can read them as black or we know them to be black while we mad? Um... I think it often obvious, well, not obviously, I think often it feels like a rejection of their most undesirable, but also simultaneously their most, an acceptance of their most cool um, part of themselves, right? If, if that makes sense. So it's like, it, it almost feels like you want to separate yourself from blackness. And I think also a lot of people have internalized this idea that if you're mixed with black and particularly if you're mixed with black and you read as black, like uh, Barack Obama, for example, that you should just identify as black because so many people will be like, I know black, I Dominicana, right? So many people will be like, oh, I'm not black. I'm mixed um, as a means of saying I'm not like you. And so, therefore, I shouldn't be treated like you. I shouldn't be viewed like you. I should be I should be viewed as someone as of a higher socio status than you. And because, in my definition of race, it is a socially stratified identity. People want to rise in the ranks of race while still linking themselves to the rhythm and the coolness of blackness. So I'm one of y'all when it benefits me. Um, half does not half the time but and it's, it's, it's and it's and it shouldn't that shouldn't really be the way that we perceive it it should all be circumstantial and contextualized like if someone is saying i have a black dad and a black mom upon being asked um and they're saying i identify as biracial but it never feels like they're trying to ostracize themselves from the community or they are trying to establish themselves as superior then that should be okay that should be perfectly fine because that's who they are. Um, I just think it's a hard pill to swallow because also a lot of black people hate being black. 
So when they see someone who has one foot in and one foot out and they want to exclaim that they have, quote, one foot in, one foot out, um, I think that can be enraging to people because it's like, this person gets to do a thing that I can't do. And that rage is justified because it makes sense to, you know, not hate blackness. Oh, what is in my eye? Not hate blackness, but um, hate all of the social baggage that comes with being black, right? Because you didn't, you didn't ask for that. Um, let me see what else y'all getting into. And then I got to get up out of here. It's been so long. This has been such a productive day. I'm like so happy. Okay, I got to go. Um, it's been, <laughs> I know Black Eyed Um, Right, and then my friend right here says, I think it is contextual. And it does have to be contextual and circumstantial. Everything has context and nuance. Um, we'll do this again um, on that secret thing that's coming in October, but actually a more fleshed out video. If you are an Afro-Latinx person who is also Black, <laughs> Hit me up. Hit me up on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram in the comments. Um, and then sometime in the future, I'll also have a specific email for that thing. Um, and it'll make sense in the future. But for right now, hit me up on my DMs. Um, and, you know, I'll see if we can make some shit shake um, so that we can have that conversation together. But, you know, just have an opinion. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. But I would like a little bit of anecdotal evidence because obviously I'm Afro Latinx, but I don't read Afro Latinx. And so I think people would re people are optical. Right. So they're like, oh, this person reads as Afro Latinx. So um, and we have an idea and an understanding of what that means. Anyway, uh, I love you guys. I love you guys extra fucking hard today. Um, I love you always. But thank you. Thank you so much for showing up for me the way that you did for helping me navigate that bullshit. Um, and yeah, I am so, so grateful. Um, this has been fun. <laughs> I did not, I, you know what I said to myself, I'm like, girl, I'm gonna come on here for 30 minutes, 30 to 45, because all my, my lives be an hour and change, and people will be like, girl, that video too damn long, and they scroll past it, and I want people to get into the things, Ugh. anyway, if you guys are not already subscribed to the Patreon, come on over and subscribe, I have some other lives that I haven't aired here on there, and obviously the part two version of the Patreon, and pretty soon we'll be getting more into all of the things that are coming up, because I quit my job, and I'm going to be doing more things over there, and on here, Ugh. I don't know what else to say, except I am full of love. I love you. I love you. I love you, like I always say, but you know, I will never leave you without saying this. I am in a constant state of practice, and so are you. You can never fail when you're in a constant state of practice. I love you. I love you, and I mean it. Um, if I hold world. Now, let me get up out of here. And see if I can afford a new laptop.